Welcome to Tech News Briefing. It's Wednesday, June 14th. I'm Zoe Thomas for The Wall Street Journal. For years leading up to and through the pandemic, money was pouring into startups. But as economic conditions have changed and interest rates have risen, funding is harder to come by. And many venture-backed startups are running out of cash. That's forcing leaders of these startups to change their business plans. One of them is Samantha Edis, CEO of the fintech Park Place Payments. Edis founded the company in 2018, and it raised $4 million from venture investors. But Edis told me she started to notice a shift in the market last year. In 2022, towards the, I would say, end of summer, there were rumblings of like, uh-oh, things are, are changing fast. You sort of started hearing rumblings of like money's drying up, the VCs are tightening their belts, everyone is getting a lot more concerned about what's to come. And I started feeling that too as a founder. What exactly did you experience? So say the end of 2022, you know, what were your investors telling you? What were you hearing from banks in terms of getting new money to move the company forward? Yeah, I mean, towards the end of summer, we had a term sheet from a lead investor and they just were suddenly unable to fulfill the amount that they had committed. They just suddenly were like, it's not happening. And I'd already raised money around that. And that was a huge blow to us. And it put us in a pretty precarious situation. And so we had to pivot and adjust really fast. So you sold the company six weeks ago. Was that ever an expectation of yours that you would have to sell the company? No, this was not the outcome I expected. It was um, very much, you know, I was building a company that we were going to have for years on end that was creating this revenue stream for tons of people, freelancers that worked for us. That was the goal. It was never the goal to sell this early. And it was really some of my, a couple of seasoned investors who came to me and they were like, this is the time to sell. The market is getting way worse People are scrambling to find outcomes. You want to get ahead of this. Of course, not all startups are able to find a buyer or make changes to stay afloat. It's a dire time in startup land. Yulia Chernova covers venture capital for WSJ Pro, and she's been looking into this broader downturn. Yulia, a lot of funding for startups comes from venture capital investors. How has VC's approach to investing in these young companies changed? Oh, so much change. (laughs) Um, You know, just VCs who fund these companies have totally different expectations from the expectations they had a couple of years ago. So for the founders, what they have to demonstrate, the traction they have to show to investors to get any kind of funding is very different. VCs want to see much more traction, revenue, customers than they did before for the same level of investment. And they want the companies to grow fast, but at the same time, something that they didn't care about as much before, they want the founders to keep costs low, to keep headcount low, to keep spending low, right? So, and to make every customer profitable. So this is very difficult for these high growth companies and uh, very few of them can really persuade investors to give them more money. We heard from one founder who talked about having to sell her company in order to survive. Can you tell us about some of the other tough decisions that founders are having to make? Sure. I mean, sometimes companies just run out of money. They have no choice but to shut down and try to sell the assets piece by piece. And then, I mean, some companies do manage to find a way out by pivoting their business. They can no longer pursue the idea they originally had, but then maybe there is a related idea that does work. What about the companies that can survive? It seems like we're seeing an uptick in that as well. How does that compare to past years? Because startups generally, you know, shut down all the time. It's a hard business. Yes, you're right. In the venture capital space, a lot of companies are not expected to make it. And uh, when VCs invest, you know, they invest in these high risk, high growth businesses with the idea that only a few make it big 
and then the rest of them don't. So what's going on now, it does feel like anecdotally from speaking with VCs, from speaking with founders, as well as these companies that provide restructuring services, that there's much more shutting down happening this year than last year and then in 2021. And one of the reasons is that there was just so much capital in 21, both from VCs and from the government that supported small businesses, that it seems like some of the companies that maybe wouldn't have survived without all that extra support, they're just now running out of money. What does all of this mean for the venture capital firms to have all of these shutdowns and and even all of these pivots from some of the companies they invest in? Well, that's the big question. We are already seeing negative returns for the first time for VC firms overall that hit in the third quarter of last year. That was the most recent data we have available. And that was the first time that there was kind of an annual negative return for VC firms overall since 2009. Some of that is probably due to shutdown. Some of that is just due to lower valuations for existing companies that are still active, but just are not valued as highly. So for the VCs, the existing portfolios are going to be suffering and the values will be suffering for sure. At the same time, for the VCs, the current market, you know, in terms of new investments, looks pretty good. VCs like it when valuations are down and when founders don't have a lot of capital sources, right? So that VCs can keep prices low and can buy into good companies cheaper. And VC's hope is that they can now invest in these uh, lean, mean, uh, money-making machines, you know, Uh, which is very different from 21 when every company was like burning money and super bloated. What does this mean then from the founder's perspective for people who want to start companies? Definitely much harder to start the company now in terms of raising money. You have to show much more to your investors, prove that this business will turn profitable, or at least on the kind of unit economics level, will turn profitable quickly, and that you can do it on the cheap, sort of, you can grow fast on the cheap. But there are some advantages to the current market for starting a company in terms of access to talent and new employees. The fact that there were so many layoffs in the tech market means that startups can also find new employees cheaper and start building. All right, that's WSJ Pro Venture Capital reporter Yulia Chernova. And that's it for today's Tech News Briefing. For more tech stories, head over to our website, wsj.com. I'm Zoe Thomas for The Wall Street Journal. Thanks for listening.